Hey everyone, this is Dustin, and I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to use Figma frames inside of an isometric illustration. So this came about because of Ryan Morrison's tweet about how to make isometric illustrations in Figma. It has this really cool tip that makes it super easy to do. So once I found that, I thought, wait, I wonder if I can also use this to make a device illustration update with my design. So I made a quick little concept, figured out it was possible, tweeted it out, it got some attention, and a few folks asked me how to do it. So I thought I would create more of a realistic design and give a file out so everyone could see how it works and then put this tutorial together. So here's the idea. It's actually super simple. I have a frame. Inside this frame is a basic design just to show how everything works. And with that frame, now it's marked as a component here. The icon looks like a component because I took the frame, I made it a component. So its behaviors are of a frame, but it's actually a component now. And the reason why it's a component is so that I can drag a version of it out and whatever changes that I make to it are going to propagate out to its children. So you see that's happening here and it's also happening in here because we have another child of this same master. Now to skew it like this, we use Ryan's trick. So you basically rotate it 45 degrees and then put it into a group. And I just did command G. And then on the size here, make sure that constrained proportions is turned off and set it to 57.73% and then hit return. So that number is actually really important because Ryan just through trial and error, figured out that that number gives you the correct rotation of 30 degrees. So that's the angle that we needed here. So by using that height, you end up with a 30 degree angle on your artwork. And once you remove the group, like I just did, you end up, you end up with this. And you can actually tweak this. Now it's going to tweak weird because there's a fixed as aspect ratio on this design. So we won't do that. But this is pretty much what is here. So um, there's a phone around it and there's a shadow, etc. But this is the main trick. So you use a frame, you skew that frame, you end up with this. But there's a couple or one major thing that you need to be aware of. If I zoom in, <clears throat> the text, it's hard to tell, but the text is actually different. And you see there's some things breaking here. So line heights are breaking. The text actually gets scaled a little bit. The reason why that is, is because in order for this trick to work and everything to line up properly in the skewed version, all of the elements inside your design need to be set to scale. So the constraints are all set to scale. And that's great for shapes, but for text, what happens is it scales the element itself and it also scales the text a little bit. I tried a lot of different ways to make this stop happening or to prevent this from happening, but I couldn't find a way to do it. So the fix is actually pretty easy. You just select the text and then you override its size. And I found that coming down, at least in my design, by about two points fixes all the text. So let's just arrow everything down. Just take all the type down two points, including inside the button here. And once I do that, everything lines up as it should. Okay, and then from that point forward, we just kind of, <laughs> I'll have to do a separate store on the phone, but you draw the phone around it, add a shadow, add the background, and you're good to go. So that is how you make a frame that automatically updates inside of an isometric illustration. Hopefully that was helpful to you. I'm gonna make this file available and uh, please ping me in the comments of, in this file, comments on Dribbble, Twitter, however you would like, and I'll be happy to help if you have any questions. Thanks.